How does this clip of the Cruel Tories show how really ruthless they really are? Now this came from a statement in the House of Commons on Monday and in the conclusion of debate in the autumn statement where the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, Mel Stride, said this. Through our Back to Work plan, we're phasing in more intensive support and more rigorous requirements on job seekers much earlier on in their com com um, claim. We are accelerating the point at which claimants are referred and required to undergo a more intensive 12-month work search regime. This will kick in after six rather than nine months after the start of a claim. Anyone who hasn't moved into work by the end of this will be required to accept a mandatory work placement or other intensive activity to improve their chances of employment. And for those who refuse this support, it is right that there should be consequences. If a claimant does not accept these new conditions without good reason, the universal credit claim will be closed. As a result, no claimant should reach 18 months of unemployment in receipt of their full benefits if they have not taken every reasonable step to comply with job centre support. We will back this up with closer monitoring to ensure the rules are being followed. This includes tracking claimants' attendance at job fairs and interviews organised by job centres. This will mean work coaches have the information they need to know whether claimants are meeting their commitments. As part of this more rigorous approach, we will continue looking at the impact of more intensive support at seven weeks into the claim being delivered through our additional job centre support. These back-to-work reforms strike at the heart of the quid pro quo that defines the contract between the state and the individual. The government will provide you with the support you need to move into work, but if you fail to keep your side of the bargain, if you refuse to engage or ignore available job opportunities, we will stop your benefits. Oh, it sounds like to me that our privately educated Mel Stride from Portsmouth Grammar School thinks that living in perpetual poverty is some sort of lifestyle choice, and if you haven't found a job in 18 months for whatever reason, they're lazy, good-for-nothing layabouts who prefer to live on a welfare that is ranked 17th in the world, miles behind France, Finland, Belgium, Denmark and Italy. And as someone who had a fight for the PIP and whatever help I rightfully needed since my emergency spinal operation for two years and I had to take it to a tribunal. And they decided in my favour because the DWP didn't give a good enough reason as to why they gave me no points for mobility problems when it was clearly obvious that I cannot go anywhere unaided. And they said that my ailments totally coincided with what I had suffered from and they ignored it in not only my first interview and also in my mandatory reconsideration too. So forgive me privately educated Mel Stride when you say you will be phasing in more intense support nonsense because when I was on an intensive job search programme all I was offered was access to work where I couldn't get past the part where you're asked what job you're currently in. I was unemployed. And we also know someone who has been unemployed for years and he was offered a placement where you were on a trial period for a slim to none chance of a job. Had to pay for his own travel and taxes if he was working nights. After the trial period had ended, yes, you guessed it, he was told, there are no positions available. He went back to the job centre was offered the same placement, same trial, same time frame. He refused because, obviously, it's not worth it, as he's having to pay for his own travel. He was sanctioned. He then had to take out a loan to pay for board and was then having to pay that back. So sorry if I don't believe you, you self-entitled, privileged little prick, Mel Stride, when you say, if you don't have any legitimate excuses, it's just bollocks, isn't it? And let's be honest to you, they're just the nasty party on steroids, aren't they? Mean, cruel, and just plain nasty. But what do you guys think? Are the cruel Tories showing how really ruthless they are? Let me know down below and I shall just bid you farewell and take care, my friends.